Hello, my name is Kathy, and today I will be discussing the importance of water in the human body and its role in good health. The human body is about 70 to 75 percent water. Water is involved with every single process that occurs in the human body. As an example, the brain is 85 percent water and is extremely sensitive de to dehydration. The human body has a kind of a ranking system as far as body process priorities go, and the functioning of the brain takes priority over all the other body systems when a person begins to become dehydrated. Few people understand that when you drink things like coffee, tea, tea beef, beer, soda, or other beverages, that your body will actually get rid of more water than is contained in the actual drink. If you were to measure your urine vol volume after the beverage is taken, you will see that you have passed more urine than the total of the beverage you just ingested. It is water that regulates all the functions of the body. Water is such an important common element that we seldom think about just how important it is for our health and well-being. When dehydration is present the human in the human body, it will at first suppress and then eventually it will kill some aspects of the body. Dehydration is a serious issue. People need to understand how important water is for our health and well-being. As an example, water is the main source of energy for the body. It generates electrical and magnetic energy inside each and every cell of the body. It quite literally provides the power to live. Water can prevent DNA damage and makes the body repair mechanisms more efficient. It also increases the efficiency of the immune system in the bone marrow. Water is used to transport all substances inside the body and is the main solvent for all foods, vitamins, and minerals. Human blood is approximately 85% water, so it is no surprise to learn that it will increase the efficiency of red blood cells in collecting oxygen to the lungs. To follow this dynamic for a bit, when water reaches a cell, it brings the cell oxygen and takes the waste gases to the lungs for disposal. We are taught that this is one of the functions of blood, and in particular the red blood cells. But what are they made of? Water! Think about this for a moment. It is ultimately water that is the key principle here. Water also clears out toxic waste from different parts of the body and is the, is the main lubricant in the joint spaces. As a result of this, it ultimately helps to prevent arthritis and back pains. Water also helps to prevent constipation and is essential for the body's cooling, sweat, and heating systems. Water helps reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke and helps to prevent clogging of the arteries in the brain and the heart. Because of its solvent function, it enables the chemical reactions in the body that give us power and electrical energy for all brain functions. It is also directly needed for the production of all hormone and neurotransmitters. Because of this, it can help to prevent attention and deficit disorder. Unbelievable, isn't it? Water also helps to reduce stress, anxiety, and depression, and helps restore normal sleep rhythms, and helps reduce overall fatigue. Water makes the skin smoother and helps decrease the effects of aging. It gives luster and shine to the eyes, and it helps prevent glaucoma as a result. Water is critical for making the immune system more efficient, as well as diluting the blood and thus helping to prevent clot form, clots from forming. Water will decrease premenstrual pains and hot flashes because of its role in hormone regulation. Dehydration will prevent sex hormone production and increase the probability of morning sickness during pregnancy. The human body has no stores of water to draw upon during times of dehydration. This is why you must drink water regularly and thoroughly through the day. Water helps the functioning of the brain and will help to prevent the loss of memory as we age. 
It reduces the risks of Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, and Lou Gehrig's disease. Water also helps prevent addictive urges, including those for caffeine, alcohol, and some drugs. So, so what are the, some of the common indications of dehydration? It might surprise you to learn that the physical thirst sensations are actually the last thing to happen in the dehydration cycle. Some of the first symptoms of dehydration are feeling tired, flushed, irritable, anxious, dejected, depressed, not sleeping well, having irresistible cravings, as well as the psychiatric conditions of being fearful of crowds and of leaving the house. There are six distinct conditions that will denote various stages of dehydration. These are asthma, allergies, hypertension, constipation, type 2 diabetes, and autoimmune diseases. The following forms of pain are other indicators of dehydration. Heartburn, dyspeptic pain, angina pain, lower back pain, rheumatoid joint pains, migraine headaches, and certain types of other headaches, colitis pain, fibromyalgic pains, bulimia, and morning sickness during pregnancy. If you don't drink water regularly every day of your life and don't understand the significance of pain, a shortness of breath and allergies as signs of dehydration, you will force your body into a disease state. The body has a wonderful capacity to recycle its water. But even so, it will lose 8 to 10 glasses of water a day. More water is lost on hot days and when you're sweating profusely. As a result, you will need to replace that water each day. So strive to drink 8 to 10 glasses of water. Drink water about 30 minutes before each meal and another glass of water should be drunk about 2.5 hours after eating to help to complete the digestive process. Remember to drink water first thing in the morning and before you exercise. As far as the body is concerned, water and other fluids are two different things. Coffee, tea, soda, alcohol, and even milk and juices are not the same as water. I know that this doesn't seem to make any sense because beverages are mostly water. But this is how the body functions and it's important to understand this. Caffeine is a serious dehydrator of the body, so ingested caffeine, ingest caffeine in moderation. So to summarize, osteoarthritis, heart failure, repeated strokes, juvenile diabetes, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, muscular dystrophy, Parkinson's disease, Certain types of cancers and AIDS are some of the many diseases that occur with the various levels of dehydration. So remember to drink your 8 to 10 glasses of water a day. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Well, until next time, stay naturally healthy.